I could imagine myself dancing to that. So this is episode two of our Urban Tango Nights Talks series. So when we first came up with this uh, idea, I envisioned that we would be sat on a sofa or in a pub or a cafe uh, uh -huh. interviewing uh, somebody um, about their experience in tango. However, due to the current situations, uh, we now have to take this very virtual. And today I'm joined by uh, bandolianist, uh, Merrick Salmon, who is the bandonian player in Tango Calor. He's also the accordionist in the Moscow Drug uh, Club, amongst other uh, ensembles and based in Bristol. So thank you for joining uh, me on this, Merrick. Thank you for uh, having me, Chris. Uh, can you say what you were just playing just then? Uh, yeah, that was uh, a, the first part of a tune called Cafetín de Buenos Aires. And... Uh, it's an arrangement by one of my favorite Bandonian players is uh, Rodolfo Medeiros. Um, there's lots of videos and recordings you can find of, of his online. And uh, if you've got time on your hands, um, which I imagine hopefully some people have, um, do go and listen to his, uh, his fantastic Bandonian playing. Beautiful player. Yeah. Yeah. So first we should probably start off where we first met each other, which was mm. just under three years ago. And... It was in a Facebook conversation. Do you remember ah, it? Okay. I know. Um, I'm just trying to. Wow. Yeah. yeah I'm um, trying to remember now. <laughs> yeah. um, so, okay. um, I took over running Durban Tango Nights with Alison back in 2016. And in yeah. 2017, we started running uh, guest teacher workshops. Um, yes. So, the first one we had was in uh, February 2017 with Alejandro, um, who's obviously yeah. based in Bristol. And then we had Eduardo. Yeah. Again, from Bristol. We seem to have a strong Bristol link. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, in the April. And then we had Alejandro and his partner Ornella was over. And yes. so they were coming in June. And okay. we were a bit short of leaders for the actual workshop. So I messaged everybody who clicked interested in the Facebook event. And you were one of those. And uh, the reply okay. was, um, I don't actually dance tango. <laughs> but I think tango band, so if you want a tango band, um, I can do that for you. That's, yes, that's uh, right. <laughs> and um, live music was something that we wanted to bring to Swansea because Wales had very little live tango music. I think the last right. time we had live tango music was in about 2010. And there's a video of a band called the Free Amigos playing in the Ice House in Swansea. In oh, the Free Amigos. Okay. Um, yeah I, yeah, I think I remember them from my days back in Cardiff. Were they Gypsy Jazz? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think so. Ah, I remember yeah. them like 20 years ago in Cardiff. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think they were the last ones to play. So we wanted to try and bring live music back. So we had Cabaret Tango yeah. playing in the August. Um, right. Uh, when we had the Island Dance Wizards as our guest teachers doing Tango Blues Fusion. Um, okay. We booked um, a solder Kamakami for October. And oh, yeah. that's when you uh, and we thought, well, we wanted some live music for that. If we're going to continue it, so we had you for then as well. So you got yes. came, and that's when we actually uh, first physically met. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yes, because yeah. you showed up in your uh, we called our events at Swansea University, and uh, yes. you came along in your I think it was uh, Volkswagen Polo with oh, Dan yeah. Turmeric, your pianist, uh, yes, with his keyboard. Uh, across the front seat and the back seat, <laughs> him sort of yes. cramped up in the back because he's about well, six foot one, six foot two. <laughs> yeah, he's a big and, guy. Then your, and your, your instrument um, under the seat. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So um, that someone, uh, ha well, unhappily, but someone managed to write that car off for me um, since. So I do have a bigger vehicle now. <laughs> yeah. And there's I also given Dan a lift though. <laughs> that, that was, um, we'll put a clip of them longer in now we've got a video of it on YouTube. <laughs> But 
also in that Malonga is, uh, is when we had the fire alarm as well, if you can remember that. Oh, gosh. Yes, yes, I do, I do, do remember go, that. And you remember walking out, going out and speaking to me on the, there's a lawn in front of Swans University, in yeah. front of the building, and you go, will my bandolier be safe? I was like, well, if there's, <laughs> if, if there's fire, not. But if it's no. just, uh, if somebody <laughs> just burned the toast down in the cafe downstairs, it'll be absolutely fine. So Yes. <laughs> But yeah, so that was the first time you played for us. So I suppose the first question is, is how, uh, if you're not a tango dancer, how did you get into the tango? Um, well, you mentioned earlier that I play accordion and it was really through that. Um, accordion is an interesting instrument um, because it's it's kind of a jack of all trades, really. So it uh, most countries around the world have... Um, have an accordion sort of tradition and, and there'll be different folk musics or world musics or even classical musics that, that are kind of written for that instrument. Um, but it seems to be able to lend itself to so many different genres, you know, from Zydeco to French musettes and waltzes and to Argentine tango, of course. And um, so when I first, I can't remember now, when uh, we were called Tango Fuego, I think, Tango Con Fuoco. Yes, that was right. Tango because uh, that was a performance direction on a piece of tango music that I discovered. Um, and uh, I put a little trio together and I was playing it all on accordion. Um, yeah. And then uh, after some time of doing that, I realized that actually, you know what, if I really want to get deep into this music, I need to, I need to get the right instrument to play it. And that's where I put the accordion aside for tango and um, I got, uh, well, started to look to find out how on earth I go about getting one of these, you know. Um, and then uh, Bandonian, you know. How did I? How do you go about getting one? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they're, they're, when I was looking, which was, I don't know, like five, six years ago or something now, um, there weren't really many available. And of course, I didn't really know anyone uh, who was part of the tango music scene because as is still the case now it's very small really in the uk you know you get we're happily uh we get a lot of visiting artists from europe and from argentina i guess that's not gonna happen this year but um uh you know they kind of enrich the musical life of tango dancing and tango music over here but um uh i looked on ebay as people do and there happened to be one for sale in london you know an argentine um guy who danced and DJed uh, but had this instrument sitting on his shelf uh, and and just decided I don't think I'm ever gonna really get to grips with this he, he was selling it so just at the right time I was looking you know yeah so that's how I got one it was literally the only one for sale in the UK <laughs> and then did you get it and go oh what the heck have I done well when I got there I was like it, it, because it's a crazy instrument as you know and uh, and this one was in interesting condition and if you've never played one before, if you've never held one before, and you're trying to decipher how things go, and it's slightly out of tune, I mean, it's just, um, just um, it's carnage, you know. Um, so I was a little bit like, okay, I've shaken hands on this, and I'm, I'm going down this road anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, I just thought, well, it's coming home with me. It's a bit like when uh, we got our rescue dogs, actually. Okay. You know, it's like, what have we done? You know, yeah. but you've got to bring them home, haven't you? Yeah, and, and I suppose it works out in the end, I suppose, as well. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And it's uh, an instrument like this, like any instrument, but particularly this one for me is, is it's a lifetime to it, you know, so it's, I'm still in the early days. Yeah. So is that the actual instrument you bought then or was that a... No, a no. Uh, yeah, if I could disconnect myself from my headphones, I, I've got it just over, over on the other side of the room. But uh, no, this, I'm now like a, an owner of two bandonians, which is great. And this is a beautiful instrument. This is... Um, Oh, the other one is a beautiful instrument, uh, and it's an original, um, like uh, I think made in the 1920s, um, which is absolutely right. Uh, there's a certain the golden, golden, yeah, yeah there's, the a, the golden, there's a golden, golden period. period. So it's just as sort of tango music was becoming more yeah. standard, standardized, I suppose, as far as form, and you've got the uh, sort of D'Arienzo, Gardel, or those yep. sort of really sort of picking it up and starting to gain popularity. So true, yes, for sure. Um, and, and that my the one that I bought dated from from that period. This one here is actually only um, is less than a year old. <laughs> um, so people still make them then. 
Yes, yeah, they started making them again because there is demand. There's uh, the tango industry, the tango world is is as lively and as vibrant and and as big as ever now. Um, people traveling all over the world, uh, musicians traveling all over the world, and like, people wanting to learn this instrument. Right? Yes, <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> not confined to quarters like we are at the moment. Yeah, but they started building them again in Europe. Yeah. Okay. I might have a little more of talk about a bit more about the instrument uh, a bit later on. So, um, yeah. if you uh, you were, were you already playing at Malongas then when you were playing on the accord, playing tango on the accordion, or were That's you just right. doing more yeah. uh, sort of concert thing with it? Um, no, no, we were playing uh, we were playing Malongas. The very first one we did was uh, just before Christmas in uh, I don't know if people know different venues in Bristol, but in a place called Canteen, which is um, just around the corner from where I live and we put on uh, we put on a malonga there and and we didn't know any of the scene really so uh, a load of people turned up and dancers and they're all talking to me about the music and and that was my first connection with this amazing kind of group of people really yeah Uh, yeah, mostly from Bristol at that point Um, but it's a very lively scene over here you know yeah well Bristol's got a huge tango scene you can pretty much tango every night of the week with classes and every weekend they normally have at least two malongas on so and they that's cover right. a whole range of music so yeah yes. it's a great place yeah great place for tango yeah uh when so did you obviously you said you uh, started to find out tango music when you were doing the accordion mm. was there some uh did you actually like the tango music when you virtually did or did you think this is i did yeah. no no i liked it very much yeah um because I was used to hearing uh, Piazzolla as sort of the the best, the, the better known pieces that yeah. kind of accordionists play as standard repertoire. Um, but then I was looking into um, some of these, I found some sextet arrangements, but they were sort of arranged so that kind of, if you only had three players, they would, as long as you had the pianist, you know, they, they would still sound full enough. Yeah. Um, and then I was learning, you know, all these crazy, uh variations you know the kind of uh, all, all that stuff you know all the showy uppy stuff and I, so that was hard enough to do on an accordion at that point let alone one of these um and so it was quite scary actually doing it live that night for a load of people i'd never met before um and it was quite physically difficult anyway to play um so uh yeah so it's proper proper repertoire um yeah, I should have a look for the set list actually from way back then. Yeah. Um, some that we still play today, but a lot that I, have, I don't think I've played since. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the reason I ask is obviously as a tango, I myself as more of a tango dancer, when I, mm. uh, I see the tango music for more for the actual, from the point of view of dancing, it rather right. than the actual sort of overall listening, I suppose, or if yes. you're just a casual listener to it. and. Depending on what part of, part of tango music you actually listen to, if sort of you listen to sort of the old nineteen twenties recordings, you're not going to get the best listening experience. But if those songs or pieces, if you still play them live today with good musicians, you, they are listenable as sort of standalone pieces. And then by the time you get to Piazzolla, you are actually in sort of the territory where many tango dancers come out of the dance territory, and it's is there for the entertainment of from listening so yeah it's always interesting to hear how a non-tango dancer listens to tango music so yes but um actually yeah what you were saying about the the golden age stuff even though i guess the recordings from that time because the recording fidelity isn't isn't great but uh uh, they are very often played now by new orchestras and kind of young players from argentina and and they they really stand up the arrangement the standard of arrangement is astonishing. They were top, top musicians and top musical minds who did all that, the orchestrations and everything, you know, fantastic stuff. Yeah, well, I was going to bring you back to, um, so again, this is mainly for the benefit of the viewer. Uh, it, when we obviously had uh, Merrick and his band to Swansea in October 2017, they also came back in 2018 and 2019. So in 2018, I remember the date well, it was 14th of October because it was my birthday. Um, uh-huh. For that one, uh, I gave a talk on the history of tango music and brought some clips of uh, uh, tango music and how it developed. So 
for those who don't know, the very early form of tango band was actually flute, guitar, and violin. So, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, we played some of the versions of those. Um, have you ever been tempted to actually sort of go back to sort of that temp music and do arrangements for your bands? Uh, I'm not, well, it's, uh, there's so much music out there. Um, so what I'm working on arranging wise really at the moment is, a, uh, accommodating the songs that our singer Indira, um, the, the repertoire that she likes. So all my kind of, uh, arranging energy is going into that. Um, but there is, uh, I think yeah, that some tango of the songs that she likes rather than just general songs. That she yes, likes. that's <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the tango songs that she loves. Um, so that that's taken up my my kind of energies on that um but there's yeah there's so much it's it's interesting because you kind of with with this instrument you sort of learn as you play um and uh so the more i'm learning to do on it the kind of the more left and right turns i'm taking with different repertoire i'm doing quite a lot of classical stuff on it as well um as, it, as, in, so, as in the bark and stuff oh like right that. well no as a little bit of warm-ups and stuff but um okay. No, no, still, uh, uh, there's a suite called the history, uh, the histoire de tango, which, which, uh, Piazzolla wrote for, um, guitar and flute. And, okay. uh, that's often played by, you, you'll find lots of versions of that recorded by all sorts of different instruments. Um, <clears throat> but I do that with a, a classical guitarist here in Bristol and I'm learning the bandonian parts for that. And <laughs> it's a big four movement suite and it's, uh, you know, Difficult, of course, but it's terrific. Actually, there's malongas in there. There's melancholic stuff in there. It's a really crazy sort of scrunchy modern modernist sounds in there as well. I mean, it's a great bit of music. Um, yeah, well, that's that's something. On. That brings me on to that. Now that, 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 oh, yeah. that, that, that neatly brings me on to when you were in Swansea in 2019. So that's when we yeah, had just the Welsh, yeah the Welsh International Tango Festival. So I think it oh, was terrific. Know, First of December, so yes. um, just short on my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so uh, for that uh, event, uh, we had uh, two bands. Uh, we had Cavalry Tango on the Saturday night, and then the Sunday for our church Malonga, we had Tango Calore. But before that, uh, Malonga, uh, we had Manic give a talk on Piazzolla, and then he played um, some of his. Uh, Chamber works with Dan Turmeric and Corolla uh, Heisenberg, is it? Yeah. Uh, Heng Hengstenberg, and it's Hengstenberg. and I love that you're calling him Dan Turmeric. It's Dan Temming, but I love his <laughs> <Yeah. new> name. <laughs> well, to be honest, the first time I met Dan, I thought his name was Dane because it's got a double A in it. So it was yeah. Uh, I'm not great <laughs> with uh, names and being able to read them off a uh, <laughs> in, in a line. So uh, anyway, I think he you, should stick with that one. Though. Turmeric, yeah. good. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be slightly spicy, but um, <laughs> yeah. So you uh, performed that, and again, this probably links very nicely to the uh, clip um, that we got on YouTube of you playing that. <laughs> talk on Piazzolla so you obviously mm. like Piazzolla and assuming because of the Moscow Club which I'm assuming which I think is a jazz quintet yeah it's a uh yeah quintet yeah 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 so obviously there's uh, Piazzolla brought in jazz to his music yeah 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 he did some work with some some big figures in jazz well Jerry Mulligan and uh Gary Burton as well vibes where um actually yeah when I played the Jerry Mulligan, which was one of his late last recordings, I think, and Jerry Mulligan, fantastic saxophone yeah, player. That was eighty nine or something, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. And and it was um, it was a very beautiful piece of music actually. And I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of saxophones, but um, actually it really works. It's great. Yeah, mm. I recommend people to check that out. That's on Spotify. Yeah. Actually, I did a Spotify playlist, I think, didn't I? You so, did. Uh, yeah, I can put a link to that below. There'll also be links. Yeah, good to, idea. Uh, 
uh, Merrick's website, the Tango Calore website, uh, Moscow Drug Club, um, and also at the end of this video, we'll put uh, the on the end screen links to all those channels so you can uh, like and subscribe to all of those. So that'll be something to, for you to look forward to and to check out in this time of isolation. Um, yes. So <laughs> going back to the sort of jazzy type uh, work, would you? I assume after you, in a couple of years, would you be? Uh, would you think of possibly going more, uh, adding more jazz into your tango uh, repertoire then? And when you're playing and improvising along? Yeah, well, there's there's a great tradition of improvising in tango music anyway, particularly with bandonian players. Um, and uh, I was talking about the the variations that they do, which is the 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 very virtuosic kind of show offy um lots of um, um semi quavers all kind of flying around to bring oh, the piece end, to like an the, end and dancers oh, well. usually know that yeah it's, it's a condensed um, and the, the dancers and they do like these sort of well, semi quaver 60s <laughs> notes just -lo 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 -lo. yeah just crazy crazy yeah and and it's very you know it's it's not unlike um, and, and it's sort of improvised you know it's and that goes back to a tradition of the way that you know mozart and Beethoven, they, they wrote their, their kind of keyboard music um, with, yeah. with all those kind of flourishes and uh, and modern day jazz players, same kind of idea. So it's all really connected, I think. And bandonianists uh, in particular also have lots of ornaments and different ways of playing around melodies. So it's quite jazz sort of uh, state of mind, I think. Yeah. Mm. Well, obviously, the other thing about, uh, one thing I've always been interested in, especially from like the sort of tango music thing is taking a piece of music and then putting it to sort of a tango band. Um, so mm. um, I found a version recently, um, I've gone what the tango band was, but it's Radiohead's Creep that they uh, oh, wow. do. It's, it's on YouTube and that's yeah. really interesting. Um, also, what's they called? Uh, Postmodern Jukebox as well on YouTube. Oh, you right. Know, like yeah, see, yeah. Uh, different styles of jazz arrangements and blues arrangements. They do also do some tango arrangements. Uh, of pop songs which, yeah so um as a tango dancer myself I'm my oh, do they? Oh, right. okay yeah um it's more I me mean, more of like the ballroom style tango i suppose but okay it, yeah you can, you can see where the elements are coming from so as a tango dancer myself my personal preference is dancing to non-tango music it's dancing to music that i normally listen to anyway which I'm not quite sure, uh, at least probably not in shape, but I've got two CD racks. So this one is full of things like Mike Oldfield and huh. Pink Floyd, okay. uh, Meridian, yep. so um, oh, Dream wow. Theatre right. and stuff like that. So it's all prog rocky stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I think that was classical music over there. But um, obviously quite a few tango dancers don't like actually dancing to that music. But right. to try and encourage into that, I've always been trying to look for arrangements to try and of sort of pop songs just to sort of ease them into it so yeah yes and oh, so Actually, there, have been, there have been some nice versions of uh of uh, beatles tunes yeah. actually that i think work quite well yeah well i think there's Adam a nice one of them together that maybe i'll bring out next time uh, or maybe on that malonga yeah. If we do something soon, I might bring that. Come together, I think it is. Yeah, it works yeah. well. <laughs> well something like Eleanor Rigby would be quite good. So you got that. You could imagine the yeah, yeah. Uh, um, at the bottom, and then the melody would probably flow quite well on there. Yeah. Well, it, anything with a strong melody, um, yeah, it's, well, it's up to you. Have the a strong melody, hence why they still hold up, I suppose. Um, Absolutely. Um, and yeah. also the fact that you can just pick an acoustic guitar and play them, and yeah, right, recognize them. So you can imagine like Hey Jude, you know, three chords and the last five minutes is just going na 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 and <laughs> <laughs> seems to work. Uh, uh, so should we uh, just have a talk about actually your instrument uh, then? So what? Uh, okay. So you said it's obviously less than a, or just over a year old now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so for those who don't know, uh, Bandonian is... Um, most people, um, this is what I assumed before I first met you and had a look at your, uh, your bandolian, it was the, um, that it was actually similar to an accordion. And then I, got, then I bought an accordion and, uh, it's, uh, and they are totally different. So um, the buttons on an accordion, some of them play notes, some of them play chords. On a right. bandolian, 
is it all single notes is it it's all single notes yes yeah. so you have to make your own chords yeah um, um i should have uh, should have brought my accordion over shouldn't i but it doesn't matter <laughs> um and also you said uh, uh, and uh and i can on accordion don't you when you push the thing together and pull it apart if you press a note it still says the same note that's different on your that's different on the bandonian yeah yeah what's that does that g to d or something you just went oh let's see Where an E. Oh, E. Okay. So there's an E yeah. to, a, to a D. Uh, yeah. But you, yeah, you have to make. What's nice is you make your own chords on the on the bandonian. Um, that yeah. that's hard. But once you know where the notes are, you obviously you're not restricted with as on the accordion where you have to not the classical biand the classical kind of button accordion, but the, the regular Italian version of the accordion. Has a, has a system where the, the chords are like a fixed uh, arrangement of notes on, on, on a single button, you know, a C major button, you know, yeah. we'll play a triad. Yeah. Whereas yeah, so the middle of the, the middle of the thing, just under that one, the dip on it, you've got your yes. C major, then the row under that is C minor, C major seven and C seven or something, is it? Uh, no, C seven and C diminished. Yeah. The, okay. I, <laughs> I can play um, all all manner of C major chords if I want to uh, on the bass side, or I can make yes, I could, so I assume you can do all the uh, different inversions. Do a C six. Uh, you split it between both hands. Yeah. I can make uh, it. So you know, I can make it like a, a eight note cluster. Um, yeah. I suppose you have to get the whole range. Yeah, I suppose the other thing that people want to know about uh, the instrument is that the keyboard on either side is different. Yes. So yeah. you have to learn four keyboards effectively. Yes, that's right. Four keyboards and they're all kind of spaced out in a, a horrible way. Uh, Pia Sola called it, um, you know, it's the devil, the instrument of the devil, because it is fiendish. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, I would urge anyone watching this to who's interested in getting one, do get one because we need more players in this country anyway. Yeah. It'd be lovely to have, um, you know, in years from now to actually have some kind of tradition of playing it in this country so we could put together sections and orchestras of, of bandonian players. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just full of accordion players, which for me, as an accordionist, I love accordion, of course, but not, I don't think it looks right, you know. Yeah. Well, we, uh, as a dancer, would be nice. So especially with the older music, I, I think it should be played live. I think that's what it was designed to be. It wasn't designed to be recorded. Mm. And as a dancer, having it live adds something different to it. As if you get used to listening hearing the recording, it, it becomes stale. While when you're yeah. live, you get the personality of the musicians in there. Yeah, you also yeah. Get, I don't know if you uh, don't know if you do this as a musician. Probably is an interesting question to ask you: Is do you feel that you actually interact with the dancers? Are you actually watching them and then, therefore, trying to interpret their movement into your playing? Or sometimes, sometimes, yeah. On uh, some of the kind of the favourites, you often uh, the extremes, you know. So if we're playing something. Um, very mournful and slow and spacious and and that's where Dan really comes into his own because he's he's a jazz player really uh, and so he's very creative and and he creates interesting sound world and and there is quite a lot of interplay with the dancers and and then also when we do some of the more up tempo malongas yeah. um you can really more. kind of build it up to fever fever point you know yeah. whereas with the songs tend to be quite arranged um Generally, they so through the very nature of that, they'll, they'll kind of be the same most times, I suppose, with the vocal numbers. Yeah, we're also thinking more from the point of view that you could do things like where you pull notes out or put pauses in and just pause instead of, yeah, you know, if you're in that sort of one, two, three, oh, four, okay, and then instead sure, of yeah. just hitting that first beat, you just drag it out, and then so the I suppose the uh, dancers don't really know exactly when it's yeah. going to come, so they have to react. I like it. Yeah, well, the dancers love it when you do it. Um... 
you know, you just like make them wait for the final cadence or something, uh, any yeah. little thing like that. Um, but also, you're right. I, I think in some of the Malongas, certainly in Bristol, where the dancers come really close by you, sometimes we've done some where we're in the centre of the room and you, you can catch their eye as they go past yeah. and, it's, and it's lovely, you know. Yeah. And, and you can see that they're really, both sides of the music are really kind of interacting with each other. Yeah, as I say, I love dancing to live music. It's also part of that fin of the way I interpret musicality is not just mm. knowing where a beat is and dancing on a beat. It's more reacting to the music that's just been played or what the person has done. As you like, put a ball of vibrato on something or whatever that is. But yeah. also, if I imagined I was actually in the band playing an instrument and uh, improvising along. Would, uh, my dancing to, uh, hope would uh, sort of interpret that improvisation. So, yeah. which again, when you get sort of, I don't know what it is, just about live music. I don't know it's because uh, the you don't get the sort of mix that you would get when you hear when you hear a song. Everything's obviously mixed together, so everything's at great volumes. You pick out different fins when you have live music, and obviously the. There's a slight imperfections. This is one thing. <laughs> we're like, it, it's not even like imperfections. I suppose it's imperfect. It's not, it's not even. Inf- in, I say imperfections. It's more sort of imperfections from if you have like a perfect, you know, hitting every beat with every note exactly on tune. Right, right. Yeah. Like, um, if uh, anyone who's watching this and doesn't know quite what I mean, if you listen to Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata being played by, well, any pianist really, but particularly somebody who's really good. If you try counting along, it's in 12, 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, that's one bar, and it's those uh, arpeggios that are going on, so there's four hedges. If you try counting it, it's nowhere near on time. Fins again pulled all over the place, and that's what makes it almost perfect to listen to. Yeah. There you go, piano in the background. <laughs> yeah, so it's, yeah, it's that sort of um, thing that I really like about live music, just hearing how the instruments are reacting to I suppose in a band you are not just you are playing together you're not just going mm. oh here's the metronome therefore I must hit this E on the third beat and go down to the D on the and and then resolve on the A or whatever yeah. it's actually hearing oh the piano has done this chord I'm just going to leave this note slightly later to play through whether that's conscious or just musicianship I suppose I- yeah, I suppose with the with the trio, where essentially it's a duo of instruments and the singer, so that does give you the 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 scope and the the freedom and the space to do that. Yeah. But it, it the the bigger you build the ensemble, the more arrangement really has to go on, and and then that element slightly goes away. So it's more yeah. about your skill as an arranger, then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Try and build those things into the arrangement, I guess. Yeah. So obviously that was. Probably should wrap up now. Um, obviously, okay. this um, I would say uh, list every event that you're going to be doing over the next <laughs> couple of weeks. I know <laughs> we had loads. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, we had a lot. We had a lot in the diary this summer, actually, which is a real shame. Uh, hopefully, most of those will get uh, rearranged. But we were doing. We started to do some small theatre bookings as well. So for a seated audience, you know. Um, oh, was that tango as well, or was that? Uh, that's tango music, yeah. yeah um, okay. That'd be interesting as so, well. So they, some of them I'd started to put on the website, but if you have a look at tangocolor.com, you'll, you'll see those. And those, not everything's been cancelled. <laughs> yeah. So I know there are even some things in May, but I can't believe, early May, I can't believe that will be no, happening. No, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> looking at how every other business is sort of setting up, even yeah. if like the restrictions are lifted on people being able to go out, um, I think probably restrictions on gatherings and just running mm. events and even for organizers so. risk um, associated yeah. with if there is another sort of spike and it going down is it's probably yeah. it's only months isn't it so um yeah yeah late summer i guess yeah, yeah. Because, and then see where things go so um we've got you booked in for the Washington national tango festival um which is again in uh december this year uh, end of november so hopefully we'll go ahead with that um yeah, there's. Uh, we are also looking at the possibility oh, of do uh, hope so. doing a uh, online live music malonga. So um, look out for information on that. Hopefully, coming over the, 
the next couple uh, or over the next week probably. Um, and I suppose okay, just great. Keep up, keep up to date with uh, Merrick's websites and Facebook pages, and uh, we'll see where things go. And uh, you're often playing at uh, Mr. Wolf's Malongas in Bristol, Hope Chapel. Uh, so that's one yeah. by Eduardo. So yeah. I've got Tango Alchemy web uh, pages. So I think people should just probably just keep a good eye on that and see what happens and uh, see where, um, as I say, see where things go. Anyway, so uh, I would like to thank Merrick for joining me today and hopefully, hopefully you'll join us thank again. Thank you for having me. For a, uh, another talk, hopefully, in the future where we can actually sit opposite each other rather than. Uh, well, what's Bristol? Seventy-five miles away from you, so yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, thank you for watching. Uh, obviously, cl uh, click like and subs uh, subscribe to uh, the Urban Tanker Nights uh, YouTube channel. Like the video. Uh, click the bell icon if you want to get more of our videos. Uh, do the same for the Tango Color channel. There'll be links in the end screen. And uh, thank you. See you again. Thank you. Yeah. See you soon. Thank you.